Welcome back to Zop Gaming. This is Totally Extreme Wrestling Fantasy Booking AEW. I'm Tim, one of the voices of As the Buckle Turn, something I keep realizing I forget to announce in the previous videos. Oh well. Well, you're here for Fantasy Booking, so I'm not going to hold off much longer. We have an excellent show for you today. We have Cody defending the TNT Championship against none other than Taz's protege, Brian Cage. We have, this week is the final week for the AEW Women's Tag Division to earn the final four spots in the tag tournament. So, we will be going, seeing who makes that final spot. Best Friends will be in action against the Inner Circles, Santana and, Santana and Ortiz. We also have in our double main event, Hangman Adam Page and Kenny Omega go at it since after Page turned on Kenny at Firefest, costing them the AEW World Tag Team Championships. And in the main event, we have Lance Archer challenging our AEW World Champion, John Moxley, for that championship. We have a great show. Let's see. Let's get to the action. But before we do that, just a reminder down below in the description, I do have this week's um, dark wins and losses. So you can check out that down below. And let's just go at it. Let's get to this card. Are you ready? In our first matchup, we have Wild Die taking on Bad Reputation. And in this matchup, we have about to have decent wrestling, but a little heat. Bad Reputation defeats Wild Die in 30, 15 minutes and 30 seconds when Dina Perezzo defeated Candy Floss by pinfall at, using an underhanded tactics. In the overall in-ring performance, Z Zaya Brookside had a 64, Kenny Floss had a 55, Penelope Ford had a 57, and Dina Perezzo had a 52, which led to a 55 match rating. But again, I'm happy with this because of this. And this is another matchup for the AEW Women's Tag Division to see who will make that tournament. We have another AEW Women's Tag Team matchup. Big Steels versus the Role Models, which is of Dr. Britt B Baker, DMD, facing, um, teaming up with Tay Conti. In a matchup that had decent wrestling but didn't have much heat, the Role Models defeat Big Steel in 14 minutes and 51 seconds when Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, defeated Tasha Steels by, this, by submission. Uh, the in-ring performance of Tasha Steele had a 55, Big Swole had a 47, Tali Conti had a 70, and Britt Baker had an in-ring performance of 77. I know I did con uh, make some tweaks on those two, but I didn't think I made that big of a tweak, so I'm going to have to go back and have to retweak them. Because it's a little too high for them at this, where they are actually in real. So, But if you don't know why I'm talking about tweaking stuff, I don't think the database has rated certain people where they should be, like Cody, who should have been way higher up, whereas other people could be higher, either from are more popular, I mean, in ring stills, skills. So I've been tweaking people left and right, but sometimes you to over tweak, and I gotta go and check. I clearly think I over tweak these two because Britt Baker is not a seventy, does not get a seventy over ring in ring performance. She's getting better, but she's not there yet. But this matchup did get a 60 overall, which is great. So I'm happy with that. And this gives two more teams wins and see if that will be enough to get them into the tournament. We will see. Our next matchup, we have Cody defending the AEW TNT Championship against Brian Cage. In a bout that had superb wrestling, great heat. Brian Cage defeated Cody in 14 minutes and 3 seconds when Cody was disqualified by 
when Darby Allen ran down and attacked Brian Cage. Brian Cage had an in-ring performance of 75, which is great. Cody had an in-ring performance of 85. The TNT Open Challenge storyline advanced and gained some heat, which is great. Like I said uh, the last time uh, in my last videos, uh, these two, Brian Cage, Darby Allen, were set into the TNT Open Challenge uh, storyline, but have been changed to something different for All Out. So they're in this one, which actually works out really well because... Uh, it's after this where I go to where I'm going with all out for both of the for them um, and Cody so it's actually a perfect little that they were tied into this storyline gave some heat to it and they're leaving with heat go um, as they go move on to other storylines um, which is actually works out really good for me and I'm actually happy with that this got a 73 and yes Cody is still the AEW TNT Championship because titles do not change hands by disqualification. I went with this as a, a cheap title defense for Cody because I wanted to make sure Brian Cage kept the win. I didn't want him to have a loss yet. But and I, Cody's been booked very, very strong so he could take this loss um, and be fine. So I'm happy with this um, and it will just help build towards Brian Cage and Darby Allen, and this will also set up nicely for where we're going with Cody um, and his future challengers. Our next matchup we have Dax and Cash of FTR taking on the natural nightmares of Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall. In a bout that had good wrestling, decent reaction from the crowd, FTR defeated the natural nightmares in 10 minutes and 49 seconds when Dax Harwood defeated QT Marshall by pinfall. QT Marshall was the weak link here. He struggled to keep up with Eddie Allison's ring performance, which I am not surprised. Uh, unfortunately, I can only give three other in-ring performances because everything kind of got bogged down and I didn't take another picture of it. But we had um, Cash Wheeler had a 90. Wow, I haven't seen one that high yet. Dax Hardwood had a 84. QT Marshall had a 29, so that shows that. And Dustin was higher up. I think he was probably in the 50s. That's what he usually falls into. This matchup got a 73 overall rating, which I'm ecstatic for. That's a great matchup for them. And yeah, I'm happy with this. So let's move on. FTR celebrates their win. Dax calls for a mic. He's handed it. Dax, Matt and Nick, last week you come into the locker room and try to take credit for our win at Fighter Fest, saying you are impressed with us now. Dax hands the mic to Cash. Cash, thanks, but we don't care. Like Dax said last week, we still aren't impressed with you. Fans chant for FTR and the Young Bucks. Cash, it's time for we put our egos aside and settle this. Fans chant for all chant all out. Dax takes the mics. FTR versus the Young Bucks at all out. The fans cheer. Dax says. What do you say? FTR leaves the ring. Here we are. The challenge has been laid. Will the Young Bucks accept this challenge and go on and get the matchup we've been waiting five years for? FTR versus the Young Bucks? Only time will tell. Hopefully next week the Young Bucks will have the cojones to answer and give us a direct knowledge if this matchup will go down. This matchup, this ring, this segment got an overall 74, which is actually pretty good. So I'm happy with that. And it further the, um, advanced the storyline for the fracture, but unfortunately it lost heat, which I'm not too happy about. But it is what it is. Our next matchup, some, after his interference in costing Sammy Guevara the TNT Championship, Orange Cassidy and Sammy Guevara go at it tonight in a bout that had good wrestling. Decent reaction from the crowd. Sammy Guevara defeated Orange Cassidy 15 minutes and 25 seconds by pinfall with a 360 after a distraction from Chris Jericho. Getting some payback on Orange Cassidy from last week. Orange Cassidy had a 72 overall rating. Sammy Guevara had a 62. The inner, the freshly squeezed inner circle storyline advanced 
Unfortunately, no heat was gained here, which is a little disappointment. But the in-ring, the match rating got a 63. With these two, I am thrilled with that. It probably could have been a tad bit higher, but there's no way this was going to get uh, closer to that, like hit 70. But it would have been nice to get like 65, but I'll, I'll take the 63. It's still a very good rating for both these two stars. So I'm happy with that. And just one more step, building towards that Chris Jericho and Orange Cassidy matchup. Our next matchup, we have match three of the best of seven series between MJF and Jungle Boy. In a decent matchup, Jungle Boy defeats MJF in 12 minutes and 3 seconds by pinfall. MJF had an in-ring performance of 63, with Jungle Boy having an in-ring performance of 61. This did advance the better than you storyline, but no heat was gained, which sucks. But sadly, for whatever reason, this matchup got a 57, which I'm going to have to guess probably dealing with creative differences because Jungle Boy won. It probably, the game was probably saying, ah, no, it should have been MGF. But because I'm doing a best of seven series, yeah, it is what it is. But hopefully future matchups will go better and get better ratings. But this now leads, sets up the score, Jungle Boy 2 to MJF 1 win. Jungle Boy needs two more wins to win the, the series. Can MJF catch up? And after the match, MJF throws a temper tantrum over his loss in the ring while Jungle Boy watches from the ring, watches from the ramp. And this, uh, unfortunately, did nothing for the feud, but it did get a 73 overall, which is great. Help boosting the, the that feud a little bit, hopefully. But I'm happy with that. In our next matchup, we have the AEW World Tag Team Champions, the best friends, taking on the Inner Circles, Santana and Ortiz. In a bout that had great wrestling, decent reaction from the crowd, Santana and Ortiz defeated the best friends in 11 minutes and 57 seconds. When Santana defeated Chucky, Chuck Taylor by pinfall with the street sweeper. Trent Beretta was ahead in terms of uh, in per entering performance over everyone in their match, which is not a surprise here. Chuck Taylor had an entering performance of 66. Trent Beretta had an 83. Wow. Uh, Santana had a 65, and Ortiz had a 70. This advanced the, inner, the freshly squeezed inner circle storyline and gained heat, which is great, leading to a 69 match rating overall, which is awesome uh only if they could have just gotten a little bit in, into the 70s but again i will take it because it achieved what i really wanted to do is gain more heat for that storyline but this was not a good week for the best friends and orange cassidy both taking losses so hopefully they can rebound that going there but this is good good thing for the um santana and ortiz because they have a pinfall victory over the AEW World Tag Team Champions. And I always go by the match. You pin the champions, you earn an opportunity. So they will get an AEW Tag Title opportunity in the future. In our next matchup, and one of our main events, we have Hangman Adam Page and Kenny Omega in a bout that had superb wrestling, good heat. Hangman Adam Page defeated Kenny Omega in 10, 20 minutes and 10 seconds by pinfall with the turn of the page. Kenny had an in-ring performance of 83. Page had an in-ring performance of 77. The Elite Fracture storyline has advanced with this segment, but no heat was gained, which is very disappointing. The match overall rating was a 73, which I'm happy with. I do wish it was a little bit higher. If this was actually on like a pay-per-view, I think it probably would have been a lot higher and more build. But again, I want their first time wrestling each other on pay-per-view to have even bigger implications than what we're getting. And I have plans for that. Oh, do I have plans. Post-matchup, Paige celebrates his win over Kenny Omega. He exits the rings 
rips the mic from Justin Roberts. He looks into the camera. Page. Now I'm done with Kenny. I'm coming for what I want. What I want is a drink and that TNT championship. A fan hands Page a beer. He takes it and downs it. Page. Cody, I'm coming for your TNT championship. Just like I did a few weeks ago. You thought it was David Starr who did it. Page snatches a drink from a fan who's pissed that his drink is stolen. Page downs it. Page. No, he took credit, but it was me. I sent you to the hospital. Next week, if I don't get a TNT championship shot, I'll be happy to do it again. So we found out that David Starr was not the person who sent Cody to the hospital in that sneak attack. It was Hangman Adam Page. Or was he or is he just taking credit for it? No, he's he did it. But we're going to have that championship matchup next week, and we'll see where this goes. Can Cody, how pissed is Cody going to be? Will that cost him the matchup? Or will Paige become the next uh, new TNT champion? Find out next week. This segment got a 79 overall, which I'm happy with. So in our main event, our second main event of the night, we have John Moxley defending the AEW World Championship against Lance Archer. A few weeks back, they went to a time limit draw. So this time we're having the rematch for the championship. And in a good matchup, John Moxley defeats Lance Archer in 15 minutes and 5 seconds by pinfall with a Death Rider. John Moxley makes his second AEW World Championship title defense. In game, he's had more at this point, obviously. As an in-ring performance, John Moxley had a 79, Lance Archer had a 58, leading to a 64 overall match rating, which I'm pretty so for. It's pretty good. I think their last one was a little bit higher. I'll put that on the screen now so you know the difference, but it's still pretty good. I mean, these two do work really well off each other. If you haven't seen their uh, Masked Man Standing matchup at Wrestle Kingdom, Holy shit, go watch it. It's great. John celebrates retaining his AEW World Championship against Lance Usher. Brian Cage and Ricky Stark come out and attack and beat down Moxley. Brian Cage has Stark pick him up and hold him. Cage slaps him a few times. He goes to hit him, but Darbion makes the save, crashing his skateboard into the back of Stark, setting him free, setting, free, uh, setting a free Moxley into Cage. He brawls with him, sending Cage to the outside. Darby Allen dispatches Stark. The two hold the ring as Cage and Stark join Taz on the stage. Moxley looks to Allen, looks back to Cage and Starks, and yells, next week. He points to him and uh, Allen, and then back to Cage and Stark. Taz smiles and accepts. So, while we had uh, John Moxley successfully defend against Lance Archer, Brian Cage has made his claim that he wants the AEW World Championship. He should be TNT champion, because, but because of Allen, that tells don't change hands, but disqualification from like last week. So he's now he now wants his opportunity. But Allen did not let that attack go through, and we're going to have a tag team matchup of Moxley and Allen next teaming up against Cage and Stark. So this segment got a 60 overall and further the TNT storyline but lost heat that's because I hadn't switched them over yet in the game yet um, after this I do so which really sucks because it lost some heat for that storyline but it is what it is um, but I'm happy with this again I would like this to be a little bit higher but you can't always have segments be in the 70s and all that. And unless you have everyone being a high, um, credible star, Allen and Stark are both young, and Stark is not as popular as Allen. Allen is not as popular as Brian Cage and Moxley in overall. But if I probably took Stark out, the rating probably would have been higher. But that's how you get other people over, getting them, like, having them share segments with people who are more popular so we're going with that so our overall for this card 
was a 67. It was down by a point. Ugh. I don't know why this was down so much. We had some good matchups. Yeah, it was down. I'm, I'm not too happy about that, but... Oof. But the show did increase our popularity in 21 region, which is a good thing. But I wish this card, especially with the ma double main event, I figured this would be huge, uh, a big red card. So hopefully our next week's card overall rating will get back up to the 70s where they have been. But only time will tell. With July closing, we need to know who our eight teams for AEW's World Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament will be. In no specific order, we have Age of Beauty, Raving Goths, The Magical Girls, and Livin', Bad Reputation, Role Models, and Supremacy. All have qualified for the AEW World Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament. That tournament starts next week. To get the full brackets, you will have to check out next week's episode of Fantasy Booking because I'm not giving them to you today. What you can do is answer the question of the video down in the comment section. Out of those eight teams, who do you think will face off and give your prediction of who will win? Um, and also let me know what you thought of the show and if your feedback and your predictions. Where do you think I'm going for All Out? Please, since you made it to the end of this video, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. It's a great way to help support Zop Gaming, as well as sharing this video on your social media. So please consider doing that. And since it's right next to that thumbs up that you're going to give us, please hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and turn on all notifications so you know when all fantasy booking and other Zop Gaming content go live. Thanks again for watching Total Extreme Wrestling Fantasy Booking. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll chat with you in my next video. Bye.